Now then, welcome to the latest edition, the uh, pre-New Year, post-Christmas edition. So we're all laid back and still stuffed with turkey uh, of Red Army TV. Uh, an awful lot to sink our fangs into, isn't it? Join me on the couch. Uh, a couple of guys who've been here before and been here in spirit. Stu Whittingham, you, you were involved with us when we started. You were helping us with our social media. It's good to finally have you on the, on the couch, mate. Good to be here. If you'll good pardon the expression. We're pleased you're there. And... Um, by the way, it's Terry. Terry, by the way, how are you, mate? I'm absolutely fine. I'm you, wonderful, thanks. You, and it's great to be here. It's great to see you here because you, you, you've had a you've had a real good battle, haven't you, with with health issues, and yes. it's fantastic to see you here, smiling. Well, I, I am a fighter, and I always will be a fighter. And if Middlesbrough fight as much as I I do, then we'll get promotion, no problem, this season. Talking fighting, then. Um, oh, look, a huge amount for us to sink our teeth into, fellas. Where do we start? Uh, let's start with the action on the field. Bolton, 2-0 uh, win. Good to see three more points. Uh, a few people could question, hey, it's Bolton. People are stuffing them left, right and centre. But they did Cardiff just before coming to the Riverside. So what did you make of the game, Terry? Well, at the first, game, the first half, I thought we controlled the game, but we, we weren't really seriously threatening them. Uh, we, had, we had a few chances and, and we did actually look a, a reasonable outfit, but not one that was actually going to cause a lot of trouble. Um, it wasn't really until the second half when things started to change. And that early goal from Braithwaite uh, really sort of settled them down then. Um, and I don't know whether it was by chance that Pulis actually went into the dressing room at half time, had anything to do with it, but it certainly seemed to work the trick and they certainly did have a much better second half. And the, obviously then the second goal sealed it. Another good goal from Sam Longa. And uh, it finished up as a, as a reasonable win. Uh, and it was three points. And that's the main thing. Because there's been so much going on, you could understand if it slipped up. Because everything was up in the air. Change of managers um, and, and such a sort of a confrontational season. So I was pleased with the win in the end. Stu, were you happy with Turnal against Bolton? Yep. Um, like you already mentioned, they done Cardiff uh, a couple of days beforehand. Um, I didn't buy this Bolton a rubbish scenario. They, they are improving, they are getting better. First half, I thought we huffed and puffed a bit. You know, we had a few chances we should really have taken. I think with Bamford had one great chance. Um, I was a bit surprised by the, 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 the substitution of friend at half time. We since know now it was Beulis that had a hand in that. Um, but yeah, reasonably pleased, very happy. Um, I thought I thought we controlled the game um, long period, especially second half. I thought second half it was some of the good stuff. And obviously Stuart Down and yet again, tremendous. Oh, tremendous display. He's been our most consistent player for the last three months. We I think we keep banging that drum mm. here on Red Army. He, he, he got, obviously, he got a bit of stick at times earlier mm -hmm. on in the season, but he's, he's certainly talked about fighting. He's come through fighting, hasn't he? Uh, a couple of messages here. I think it could be the old family kicking in here. Uh, <laughs> do you know someone called Kim Walker? Oh, yes. That's oh, yeah, Kim daughter. Walker. Uh, yeah. Say hi to my dad and bro. Uh, James Lee, Stu is absolutely smashing guy, knows his onions as well. How much did you pay Lee so for that one, mate? <laughs> I think he's trying to get us. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we did Bolton. We'll, we'll chat much more um, throughout the programme on, on that performance. Uh, but we've got to get into... Leo, Lights for Leo, it was an initiative that we started on Red Army. We didn't know how it was going to go down at all. We stuck the message out there. The Borough fans have been tremendous. They took that message, they remoulded it into something fantastic and ran with it. Over 100,000 was the reach in the end for all the social media messages, the way the fans were sharing and retweeting and all that sort of stuff. Terry, it was fantastic to see the lights, wasn't it? Uh, 50 minutes in, five minutes into the second half. Just that message to Leo that tragedy has struck me, but... Yeah. you know we're still there behind you absolutely leo was a legend here i mean he won the borough hearts um he was so passionate about the borough and he showed he was out there and it showed and the borough took him to his to the hearts and then we heard the tragic news and everybody was felt really bad for leo you know such such a, a horrendous situation for him and uh, particularly at this time of the year so what they did was was absolutely first class but there's nothing more than I expect from Borough fans because they're true, they're genuine people. I, I almost thought that Braithwaite was going to spoil it a little bit by scoring just a minute before they actually were going to have the lights put up. But 
um, it was a, a lovely, a lovely way to, to show our solidarity behind Leo. But we've got some pictures, so let's have a look at the pictures of, um, of, of the lights at the Riverside. Um, Stu, you were there, of course, as mm -hmm. always, um, at the game. What did you make of the tribute? Uh, it was a tremendous tribute by the Middlesbrough fans. Like Dad said, it's, it, it doesn't surprise me with the Borough fans, and, uh, and it's amazing that it was picked up. And, and just ran with it. And even at the end of, of, of the uh, the tribute, the Bolton fans applauded as well, which I, I thought was a, a really fantastic touch. And uh, again, even even singing, he's one of our own. Leo's one of our own. It shows you how much they took Leo into the into the hearts. And some of the things he used to do it made us laugh. He, you know, he used to kick the ball when it well, came have, out. Have a look at this. This is him at Wembley. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember Wembley when he ran out with the <laughs> UTB <laughs> banner and yeah. um, and he stuck it onto the net yeah. in front of the Borough fans? And yeah. Darren Meadow posted this. So thanks for posting it, Darren. I mean, that that's that typifies Leo, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? It does. It does. Yeah. And, and I say, in tragedy, at least there's some solidarity with him. Um, Leo still loves the club and. And the fans still love him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the good news is um, uh, Fluminense got involved. They've been talking about the tribute that the Borough fans were, were, were making. Uh, they've asked for the video, so the video's been sent to them. And also a couple of neighbours, when Leo was living here, has asked for it. And they're going to send it personally onto him at the right time. So mm -hmm. that message Excellent. from the Borough fans, absolutely stunning. You've done yourselves absolutely nothing but... But pride should be worn on the, uh, on the, on the old sleeve, just like uh, like Leo did when he was uh, pulling on the tracksuit, the Borough tracksuits. So well done, Borough fans. Let's get back to uh, the action then. So we're talking Bolton. That's when um, the lights for Leo took place. Let's get uh, your views, fan, uh, the fan rants. Mark's been out and about with his camera, catching the views of the Borough fans after the Bolton win, of course, without Gary Monk in charge. This is what you had to say. I thought it was uh, a very good match. I thought we had more, far more uh, uh, opportunities than we scored. And if we can just stop missing those little chances, we'll uh, score a lot more. That's amazing. I enjoyed it. I thought they played a lot better today. Uh, it was more encouraging, really. Uh, looking forward to Saturday. Green on Villa. And what do you think of the uh, lights for Leo? Oh, that was brilliant. Oh, marvelous, yeah. Well, um, what, what are you know, not scoring in the, in the 49th minute? Yeah, you know, minute away. Well, it's it was fantastic, fantastic yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Leo, yeah. we love you. Come <laughs> again. Leo, we love you. Oh, um, that, I thought it was a decent performance. Um, that all, all, all around good performance, basically. That not much that you can really add on. Like playing well under the youth team manager. That I thought Pulis. Uh, looking down on the match, could have went down at half time. That's why Jeff said and friend could have went on. But good performance. That's all there really is to say. And what do you think about the lights for Leo? Oh, that Class. was good. Very yeah. good. A, a few yeah. Bolton fans doing it as well, which played a lot better than they did before. It was a little bit more exciting. That was a great result. <laughs> and the uh, second half, the lights for Leo. That was brilliant. It was absolutely fantastic received. Fantastic. Yeah, it was all right. It got going a bit um, towards the end. But the second half, missed the first goal because I was trying to get a pie down. And uh, <laughs> in the second half, the uh, lights for Leo. Was that a good idea? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a really good idea, yeah. Uh, a lot more positive comments and good to see. Finally, it's like whoosh, sigh of relief and all that sort of stuff. Comments on social media. We'll be talking uh, Pulis and Monk very shortly. Uh, anything about Monk t uh, talking to Swansea, Joe McPartland? That's one of the many rumours that's been flying around. Absolutely nothing, Joe. Uh, although Gary Monk has come out and made a statement uh, via the League Managers Association. We'll do that shortly on redarmy.tv. Matthew Proudman, Monk had to go. Dave, seventh at Christmas is not good enough. Um, Julie Whittingham, hi, me and the boys are watching Daddy too. Oh, very nice. How embarrassing family can be. Simon, Ga uh, Simon Galloway, good mate of mine. Heart goes out to Leo. Love the guy a bit. So passionate about the borough. I can't imagine what uh, he's going through at the moment. Just horrific time. Thanks for that one, Si. Simon Denham, does anyone know what the situation is with Clayton? Yeah, what's the situation with Clayton? I suppose we'll find out under Pulis, won't we? I think we'll know so, exactly. Yeah. We'll know exactly what's going on back. there. So many comments coming in. You can be part of it. Uh, hashtag Red Army TV, Facebook Live. Get on there and leave your comments. 
we will be plowing through them we've got them here in the studio fellas we're going to talk about the situation of manager one leaving one coming in obviously craig little was sandwiched in between but we've um, we've got to earn some money and take a break very shortly so um, start the old uh, grey matter whirring and whirring and uh, and we'll come on to your thoughts on monk going did he have to uh, pulis as well um is it a good one is it not a good one seems to be pretty positive but you keep your comments coming in we're going to take a short break like chris mcdermott pulis connected better in one press conference and gave me more feel for our club than monk did in six months up the borough great quote as well from pulis from that press conference we'll be doing that and much more after this short break on redarmy.tv <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, some great news actually just coming into us here at redarmy.tv. Fluminense have uh, just released a statement to say that uh, Petro, uh, who is Leo Perkovic's son, uh, though still is poorly in hospital, has been moved out of intensive care. Uh, so he is improving. So fantastic news to hear. And uh, the club also offers their thanks for all the support and prayers in the direction of Leo. And uh, they have been provided video of the lights for Leo campaign from uh, the Riverside Stadium on Boxing Day. Fellas, um, we've got to talk about Gary Monk um, leaving and uh, obviously Tony Pulis coming in to replace. Um, Stu, you're one to really defend the borough players, manager at times on mm -hmm. social media. Um, so it's a good one to ask you. What do you think about Monk going? Um, shocked when I heard about it, especially the timing of it, straight after the victory at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, I was never, as you know me, I was never in the Monk Out Brigade. I thought he should have been given a bit more time. Yes, results, it's a results business and, and, and that's what the fans demand. Um, he was a nice guy. Um, I just think, I, I, it's not an immediate reaction, but I just think that if they'd have given, maybe he had a, there's been one or two things about he never had an assistant, a proper assistant manager. Maybe if he had an assistant manager like the old Venables and Robson, maybe that might have worked for him. Um, but I can understand both sides of the argument. Um, obviously, a lot of the fans, some liked him, some didn't even when he when he joined. Um, it was always going to be a tough ask. The club was broken when he when he took over. He did well. He, he did well in his six months, and I just wish him I wish him all the best wherever he goes. Well, let's get some of your views uh, immediately after the game, or in and around the Riverside before and after the game, on uh, the fact that Gary Monk went and Tony Pulis came in. This is what you had to say. Yeah, I think it's a good good signing. Good signing. Good signing. Really good signing. Same about Monk, but there we are. I feel like he can bring a lot of experience to the club because he's been at like a lot of. A yeah, lot of clubs, and he like that, and he knows how to like manage in the Premier League. Team, yeah. just so we'd win, and we think we'd be on another win streak, but we would just lose the next three or so. Yeah, and it was it's just getting the team. We so we need to do it. You second? I think it was time for Monk to go because we weren't playing consistent. We weren't like winning every game, I and mean, we should be if we're like going to be contenders for the Premier League next season. Well, he's been sacked most places. He's been but being biased, who take us up? I'm biased. I'm saying that way, but. You've asked me, so I've just told him. And we think about Monk being sacked. He deserves all he gets. Uh, Tony Pulis. Uh, well, immediately I think of his name. I think of a rather defensive manager. Right. And, uh, however, I don't mind defending if we can win. And uh, if we've got two or three seasons of uh, defensive play, but wins, 1-0 will do. That'll do absolutely fine. I think he's exact, exactly the man we need, really. Um, your boring style of football, similar to Cranker, but I think the, game, the goals we've been conceding, I think is exactly what you need. You won't lose games under Pulis, so... What about Monk and Saxe? I think it was right, right time. I think we should have... When uh, Gibbo sacked Cranker, he probably done it at the wrong time, just after the tra January transfer window, so... He's probably done it at the right time now, give someone a transfer window to sort the team around, bring some players in. And interestingly, uh, Gary Monk has come out, or yeah, come out with a statement through the League Managers Association. Uh, this is what Monk had to say about uh, him leaving Middlesbrough. My staff and I were surprised by the timing of the decision. Of course, we expected to be higher up in the league and to be seeing more consistent performances by this stage. I do accept my responsibility for that, but the feeling amongst everyone in the dressing room after Saturday's game, that was Sheffield Wednesday, of course, was that it was the turning point 
in our season. Um, Terry, obviously, surprised mm -hmm. was the word that Gary Monk used about him parting ways with Middlesbrough. Were you surprised? Um, I wasn't, I wasn't. Um, I, I was surprised in, in the timing, I think, like everybody else. But uh, I felt that uh, there was an, an awful lot of pressure uh, being put on him, simply because he had a team which was seriously underperforming. He also had a team where one week it'd win, next week they'd lose. There was no consistency at all. And th the question was, well, why is this? And unfortunately, it has to come back down to the manager. He's the one who carries the can at the end of the day. And I think the fact that um, we'd had a season of, of so many ups and downs made you think, well, if we don't do something soon, then it may be too late. OK, we'll talk more about Pulis coming in and uh, obviously Monk going out very shortly. But it's time to catch up with your views in social media land. That's that Twitter and Facebook thing that you're watching us on live at the moment. Uh, Matt, Matt Bland, our Matt, has the details. Right, after what seems to be a very bizarre weekend for Borough fans, let's catch up and see what's been happening with social media. Starting off with Michael Lee, he stated Middlesbrough sacked Monk because apparently they didn't like the style of football. They've now gone and appointed Tony Pulis. Bit like sacking your electrician and hiring Stevie Wonder to wire your house. And Swales, he's a West Brom fan, he's had a bit of a chip in, stating Borough fans ignore the naysayers. Pulis absolutely saved our club and did an unbelievable job. Very, very good appointment. Matt Rowney, he stated, you know what, jolly pessimistic judgmental Borough fans who've slated this guy before he even got here. He's won promotion before, he's never been relegated, he's took a team to the FA Cup final, Europe and played a thousand games in the Premier League. Welcome Tony Pulis. And finally, Anthony McCarthy, Pulis dismissed out of hand by Gibson as a successor to Mowbray is now his only candidate. Four bosses in nine months, local paper sidelined. Gill still chief scout despite a series of bizarre useless signings. Hopefully Santa brought the club a plan for Christmas. Keep your social media comments coming in and if you want to get featured on the show and send them to us here at studio at redarmy.tv. Matt's the man, thank you for that mate. Um, so we're talking Pulis, uh, while we were talking quotes there was, a uh, there was a Tony Pulis quote that came out of the press conference which we'll get a bite of very shortly. Uh, and I like this, and it seems to have caught the imagination of a few Borough fans. This is it. It's a tough area. It's a hard-working area. The people expect, if they pay money, to get a day's work out of people, and that appeals to me. Sounds like it's a bit of a no-nonsense approach. What do you make of him? Yeah, uh, very much he is. Um, the teams he's had, he's, he's, he's old school. He's of the Wenger, the, the Ferguson era. Um, he'll take no, no prisoners. He, and like I mentioned before, he likes grafters. Um, he likes people. I mean, I've I, I seen some of his press comments, and he, and he used the, the, the comment, I want, I want the place to run around, you know, um, to, to, to entertain, to, to make sure that they put a shift in and all the hard-earned money that's spent going to see them is well spent. OK, well, let's hear from the, uh, the Borough boss himself, because we did get the camera into the press conference after the game against Bolton where Pulis came down and talked to uh, all the members of the media. This is what he had to say. Probably Steve. Yeah. I think he sold me the club and he sold me himself. Um, and obviously I've rung people up about the club, people who've worked here, people who've been here. And I've also spoke to people who've worked with Steve. Um, and so it was, he's, he's been like a dog with a bone really. And you know, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's been flattering, really, that uh, someone of his esteem and someone of his character. And it, it's an area, and I come from South Wales, and, uh, you know, it, it, my dad worked in the steelworks and everything else, and, and this area has got a similar feeling to that. I think the people, you know, it's a, it's a tough area, it's a hard working area. People expect, if they pay money to get, you know, a day's work out of people, and that, that appeals to me as well. And I, I, you know, I think the areas, are, um, you know, the North East and South Wales, very, very similar areas with similar people. So it, it would be nice to get my teeth stuck into it, get obviously the, try and get the crowd with good performances right up and behind the team and the group. And yeah, let's push on. I've got to say, I like the sound of Tony Pulis, and I've worked with him a few times when I was doing the Sky job. I had to go and interview him when he was at Stoke City. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's not forget, he did bring Stoke City up 
from the Championship into the Premier League. And they were the second top scorers that season. So yeah. in the Championship, he has had teams banging in the goals. And, you know, we want to be entertained. But first and foremost, we want to be promoted, don't we? Yes, absolutely. Um, and that's the, the key to the whole thing. Because he's a manager not just for now. He's a manager for the future as well. Because not only will he take you up, he'll keep you in the Premiership. And that he's, uh, he's got proven ability at that. So it, 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 it could be, uh, you know, a success for the future as well. And I, uh, I'm like one of the many people uh, uh, who think that Pulis is a no-nonsense guy who will actually get the team working as a team, which is what we suffered with a little bit. It's interesting you say that because there's a comment here from uh, Simon, Simon Denham and he says Clayton will run all day for Pulis. Do you think you'll get that sort of reaction from all the players? I do, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I think the likes of Adama... His days could be numbered. He, you know, I don't think under under Pulis he'd be able to be late for the bus again. Mm. Um, but the likes of Clayton, I, I'm I'm convinced Clayton will be brought back. He's he's a workaholic, and this is what Pulis is all about. Mm. Cracking stuff, fellas. Uh, we've got the small matter of uh, Aston Villa to come. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want a scoreline. Scoreline. I fancy us. I think we'll I think we'll beat him two one. Similar two one. I think two, two one all round. I'll go for a one nil win. We'll catch you next week. See you.